Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a set of 11 diagnostic memory queries that let you understand what's happening with the memory on your SQL Server instance. These queries should work on SQL Server 2012 all the way through SQL Server 2019. So let's get started here. The first query is looking at system memory, and this is looking at memory from the operating system's perspective. And when I run this query, it comes back and shows me that I've got 64 gigabytes of memory in my workstation and about six and a half gigabytes is available. And then the most important column, in my opinion, right here is the system memory state. And that is telling me available physical memory is high. And if we go back to the query itself, I've got some notes here. There's other query values that you might get back for that column. So you want it to be available physical memory is high, just like that but it could be physical memory usage is steady or low or running low or physical memory state is transitioning. If you see any of those four values, that's not good. You want available physical memory to be high because that is the operating system's view of memory. And if the operating system is under pressure, that's called external memory pressure. And if you did see that your operating system was under external memory pressure, you would wanna make sure that your max server memory setting is set low enough for your workload and whatever is running on your SQL Server instance. So that ties into the next query, query number two right here, max server memory. And this is for the instance, and we run this. This comes back and tells me that on my workstation, I've got it set to 54,000 megabytes. And that is limit for how much the SQL Server buffer pool and a few other things are allowed to use. And that needs to be set low enough so that no matter what else is going on on your system, the operating system is not going to be under memory pressure. So moving along, the next query in this set is process memory. And this is gonna tell us what SQL Server itself thinks about memory. And when I run this query, it comes back and says that it's using roughly 47 gigabytes of memory. That's how much SQL Server is using. And then this column right here, locked pages allocation, if that's above zero, that tells me that locked pages and memory is enabled, which is usually a good idea for most production database servers. And then these two columns on the right are just flags, whether the process physical memory is low or the process virtual memory is low. And it's very rare in my experience to see those to be anything but zero. But that's something you also want to glance at. Going back to the next query, page life expectancy. And page life expectancy, or PLE, is how many seconds that data lives in the buffer pool before it gets flushed due to memory pressure. And when I run this on my system, it's gonna be a really high value because my system's been running for several days and SQL Server really hasn't been doing any work. 407,000 seconds is really, really high. You're not gonna see that on most production database instances. But you don't wanna just run this one time and make a decision that it's either good or bad. You wanna run it at different times, different days of the week, different times of day. Most good monitoring systems will give you very good historical information about what's been happening with your page life expectancy over time. And that's better than just looking at it at any given instant. So going back to the queries here, the next query in the set is query number five, total buffer usage by database. And this can take quite a few seconds to come back on an instance with lots of RAM. So I wanna give you that warning. But on my workstation, it comes back fairly quickly and when I run this what this is telling me is what database or databases are using the most memory on the instance so I have a database called no compression test and it's using about 33 gigs of memory in the buffer pool and that's nearly hundred percent of the total buffer pool usage so that is what's using my memory on this instance and that's really good to know in real life if you're under memory pressure you want to know what database is using all the memory so then you can start to drill further into that database and understand what inside that database is using the memory so moving along here the next query in the set is a Windows performance counter and of course, this is not going to run, or work rather, I should say, on a Linux system. It's only going to work on Windows. But when I run this, 
This shows me if I have any memory grants pending for this instance. And you need to run it multiple times like I am here. And if you ever see memory grants pending above zero, that means you're under extreme memory pressure that SQL Server is waiting to get a memory grant to do something like run a query or come up with a good execution plan. And that's very, very bad. It's also very unusual in my experience. So the next one in the set is extremely useful. It's memory clerk usage for the instance. And this is showing you what memory clerks are using the most memory on your instance. And when I run this on my workstation, this comes back with memory clerk SQL buffer pool. And that's what you want to be using the most memory. That's your SQL Server buffer pool. That's where data is cached in memory after it was read off of disk into memory. And that should be your highest consumer of memory. But you might see other memory clerks using a lot of memory. And a common offender is this one right here, cache store SQL CP. And that's a special memory clerk that tracks how much memory is being used to cache ad hoc and prepared query plans. And it's pretty common for that to grow quite large. And there's things you can do to help mitigate that. And the comments right here talk about that. The first thing you should do is make sure you have optimized for ad hoc workloads enabled at the instance level. If you have SQL Server 2019, you can also turn it on at the database level. And that will help reduce that. And then you also, in many cases, will have to run this command right here, dbcc free system cache SQL plans. And that will flush all the query plans for that memory clerk, and that will free up additional memory on top of what happens with optimized for ad hoc workloads. So that's something you want to take a look at, and, and in most cases have that running with an agent job periodically. So now, we're gonna to switch to some database specific queries. The rest of the queries that we ran before this, it didn't matter what database you were connected to, but now it matters. So make sure you're connected to the database that was using the most memory. So the first query we're gonna run in this set is gonna tell us what queries for this database are using the most logical reads. And logical reads means that SQL Server is finding the data that it's looking for in a query in memory in the SQL Server buffer pool. So when you look for queries that are using a high number of logical reads, those are the ones that are causing memory pressure. Now one big caveat here is that this is only picking up queries that are in the plan cache right now. So if you're under extreme memory pressure and plans are being flushed from the cache quite frequently, you might not get a completely accurate picture. But this is showing me that these queries right here are using lots of logical reads and they only have an execution count in this case of one. So whatever they did used a lot of memory and created quite a bit of memory pressure. And if we were to scroll further over to the right, in most cases you will get query plans that go with it. I didn't get them for these top three for some reason, but this one right here does have a query plan. And if I click on that, that's gonna co come up and show me what was going on. So it did a clustered index scan of this very large table, and that read all that data from disk into memory if it wasn't already there. And that caused a bunch of memory pressure. So that's why that happened. So going back to this query set here, and going back to the editor, the next query in here it's gonna focus on just stored procedures. So if you have stored procedures in your application or your database, this will find which ones are using the most logical reads. And I'm gonna tell you right up front, I don't have any stored procedures in this database, so this comes up blank. But in many production databases, you will have a lot of stored procedures. And again, the same caveat applies here. This is only looking at query plans that are in the plan cache currently. And if you're under extreme memory pressure, you might not always get an accurate picture from this. So the next one in this set is gonna look at table sizes in the current database. And when I run this query, it's gonna show us which tables are the largest on disk. And it's gonna show us the row counts and the object size in megabytes. So you can see that you've got online search history non-compressed 
and it's using this much memory on disk and or space on disk I should say and then the compression is none so the clustered index or the heap if it didn't have a clustered index is not using any form of compression and then we have one right below it that is actually using row compression you can tell from the name and then right here SQL Server is telling us that it's using row compression and look how much less memory that it's using than the non-compressed one and then finally we've got page compress and all three of these by the way are identical as far as the data is concerned they have, they have exact same row counts and they have the exact same data the only difference is this one has no compression this one has row compression and this one has page compression and see how much smaller it is on disk and when you use data compression you get a benefit on disk and you also get a benefit in memory and you also get a benefit from having to do less work to read it from disk into memory into the buffer pool so this tells you all that and so what this would tell me in real life is that this particular table might be a good candidate for data compression and that's what I did I compressed it and, and made a copy of it right here and that's how effective it was the last query in the set is the one that's going to take the longest to run on most systems it's looking at the actual buffer usage for the current database so we'll go ahead and, and kick that off and I'll talk about what it's going to show us so it's going to take a while to run even on my workstation so what this is doing is reading everything in the buffer pool and figuring out what indexes are using the most memory. It's going to show us what, how much memory they're using. And this is going to take about a minute, I think, on my system when I tested it before. And why this is so important is this helps you understand what's using the most memory in this database that we already know that this database is using the most memory on the instance. And if I was under memory pressure, now I don't have to guess. I know that it's this particular database, and pretty soon I'll know what indexes and what tables are using most of the memory and whether or not they are using data compression. So this is extremely useful. That query finally finished in 59 seconds on my very fast workstation. And this query can take many minutes to come back on a production database system, so I want you to be aware of that. But what it shows us is the object name so this is the table name right here and then it shows you the index ID index ID number one is the clustered index and then the buffer size in megabytes that's how much space in the SQL Server buffer pool is being used by the clustered index for that table right now and then you get the buffer count and the row count and then you get the compression type so for that first row it's none and then the next one is row compression and the next one is page compression and these are identical tables in all other respects except for the type of compression that was being used so this is really powerful knowledge to know because in real life maybe this is the actual table right now that I'm dealing with and if somebody did a clustered index scan of that table I would be using 18 and a half gigabytes roughly of memory in the buffer pool and if I only had 64 gigabytes of memory on the machine like I do on my workstation that's a big chunk of my available memory and it turns out that this table is really highly compressible so if I went in and applied page data compression to it instead of 18 and a half gigabytes I'd be down to less than four gigabytes of memory in the buffer pool and that's going to reduce memory pressure on my system and my page life expectancy will go up as a result if I compress that table and the clustered index on that table. So this is incredibly valuable in some cases and running these queries that I've showed you will help you find good data compression candidates. And when I go back to the editor for a second, I also have a companion video that I made a few months ago called Estimating Data Compression Savings in SQL Server, and that's on YouTube. And that goes into more detail about how to look at particular tables and see if the indexes in that table are good candidates for data compression or not. And I also have a companion blog post that has even more detail on some respects of that than the video. So if you're not familiar with SQL Server data compression, I urge 
you to watch that video and the link for it will be in the description for this video. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Really? You have a lot to say.